Good morning, and I greet you in the name of the Lord once again. And I know that the Lord has been good to me in this, in this, this past year, and uh, I know the Lord has been good to you as well. So, uh, praise God this morning. As you know, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. One day in which we, like those early pilgrims, set aside time in our busy schedules to give thanks to God. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but the Word of God tells us that this should be a continual daily attitude. Continual daily attitude. So the art of thanksgiving is one thing that separates man from the animals. To receive a gift and say thank you is one of the noblest things a man can do. There's nothing small or trivial about it. To say thank you is to acknowledge that we have been given something we did not earn and do not deserve. So our scripture this morning says in Ephesians 4, starting with verse 14, if you have your Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 um, says, this is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Verse 15, he says, be very careful. Are you being careful? Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand that the Lord's will, be, Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And then, next couple of verses, 19 and 20, tells Christians to speak to one another with the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God, the Father, for everything. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And then another scripture this morning, uh, which is in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Many of you maybe memorize this text. It says, and be joyful. How often? Always. And pray. How often? Continually. And give thanks in how many circumstances? All circumstances. A joy, thanksgiving, and praying and praising, are they feeling or choices? Now, it's first choice. Feeling will come afterward. And Paul's main subject here is praise, thanksgiving, and notice the other important words being used here in this passage, always, continually, and in all circumstances. And he's talking about a continual attitude for Christian, an attitude of a heart, and how we are to be to each other. But how can we? You may wonder, how can we have this attitude continually, especially in all circumstances of life? Even under the pandemic, even under the personal tragedies, even under many unforeseen uh, events of life. I think one of the answers lies in our perspective of thanksgiving. So we need to understand the proper perspective in this life. 
So to be thankful in all circumstances, we need that a new perspective. And only then we will be able to give thanks to God, to the Lord always. So this morning, I, I am reminded of uh, Matthew Henry of 19th century English preacher. He was walking down the road one day, and he got robbed in broad daylight in 19th century. That evening, he wrote in his diary. He said, I was robbed today, and I thank God, first, because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, because they took my all, it was not much. <laughs> Fourth, because it, it was I who was robbed, not, and not I who robbed. You can think of fifth, sixth, and seventh reasons and beyond. So what are you thankful for for the pandemic that we are experiencing since last year? You can fill in the blank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? You can do that later. The Israelites grumbled because they had no food. So God miraculously prepared manna to cover the ground each day except on Sabbath day. Then they started to grumble because it was the same thing every day. Imagine, I mean, in the first, when they tasted for the first time, it melted in their mouth. It was heavenly, right? And the week passed and month passed. Guess what? They got tired of the same thing. God provided them shoes that did not wear out but they wanted the shoes with the styles, trendy clothings. They want to build their own houses, not tents. They witness miracles daily, straight from God every day, without any exception, every day. And did you realize we are witnessing God's miracle every day? And we have heard a few of them this morning, but uh, let me assure you, we have God's miracle that happens every day, straight from God. The reason they began grumbling was because they began taking things for granted. They began taking things for granted. I think that's one of the reasons. Suppose the sky was never blue. Maybe Suppose sky was always gray or black or the lawn never was green but yellow or other colors or brown. Thanksgiving should be expressed and one of those psalms in the um, uh, in the book of Psalms, Thanksgiving Psalms. There are several Thanksgiving Psalms in the book of Psalms, and one that I'm thinking of this morning is Psalm 100, which says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Thanksgiving in your heart. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. So we should express our thanks to God and others. Remember in the um, Luke, one of the uh, chapters in Luke, I think chapter 17, where 10 men who were healed by Jesus of their leprosy, out of those, those 10 men, only one came back to thank Jesus, to express his gratitude. Only one man came out of 10. And Jesus said to him, Rise 
and go, your faith has made you well. What about the other nine? The other, the other nine was also healed, right? What about this, this man who came back to thank him? And well, as he said, your faith has made you well. What about the others? Well, I think, I believe God, Jesus is talking about extra added blessings to this man. A um, little different from the other nine who were being healed. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said that? Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The other nines, they were also healed. But when Jesus says to this one man, your faith has made you well. He wasn't just talking about physical healing. He was talking about a spiritual one. Maybe mental healing as well. He was made whole. Unlike the other nines, he was made whole mentally, spiritually, and physically. And do you realize we too are made whole by our thanksgiving? This man came to express his gratitude. So, Bible teaches us to express our gratitude to Him, who is the source of all blessing. Now, it's one thing for us to think about it. Oh, I'm so thankful. But you just keep it in your heart. Now, that is not the same as opening your mouth to express how you feel about the blessings that you have received. There is a grand difference. According to Hans Seel, who is considered the father of stress, psychologist, he says that sincere gratitude, thanksgiving, is the healthiest of all human emotions. As this man expressed his thanksgiving, how he was grateful for healing, Extra layers of healings were be taking place in his life. You see, healing takes place when we have, when we develop this thanksgiving attitude that Paul is talking about here. Now he continues to say that grat gratitude produces more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in life. Mark that. We have all kinds of emotions, but the gratitude is the best one out of it all. That's what he's saying. Gratitude, thanksgiving, and a thankful heart. And it has to come from our heart, you know? That's what the Bible says. It has to come from our heart. A thankful heart will endear others to us and us to others. You see, thanksgiving is not only good for us, it is good for others as well. If we, are, if we are not grateful, if we do not express our thanksgiving, then it can have the opposite effect. Before we leave this point, that thanksgiving should be expressed, there are many ways we can say thank you to God. Do you realize there are many ways you can do that? When you spend time with Jesus, you are appreciating His presence in your life. You're expressing, you're expressing your gratitude to Him as you spend time with Him. When you forgive others, you are expressing your thankful heart to him because he has given you the full forgiveness. When you serve in the church, 
you are serving Jesus because he is the head of the church. And we are, you, you are expressing your love and gratitude toward him. When you share plan of salvation with others, others, when you give testimonies and when you share blessings that you have received with others, you are in reality saying thank you, Lord, for being good to me. Not only should our thanksgiving be expressed, but also we learn that our thanksgiving is expected by God. Do you realize that? Paul says that we are to give thanks in all circumstances because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's God's will for us. It's good for us. He knows our ins and outs. He knows what's best for us. And, and thanksgiving is doing much good for us. And God knows that who is the creator of ourselves. God knows if we will do it, our lives will be changed. So we have many takeaways from these uh, principles being laid out here in the Bible. First one is um, this. Thanksgiving attitude is the mark of a growing Christian. Is the mark of a growing Christian. For example, a baby is usually ungrateful. <laughs> you can take a little baby when it has a colic and walk the floor with them for many hours. And when you put that baby down, do they say thank you? Most likely they will cry louder, right? <laughs> Child has to be taught to be thankful. So when you, when you have developed that thankful attitude, you have been educated, you have learned to thank God. So if you are thankful to God, then you have been growing. You will not be constantly critical and pessimistic, but always thankful even though the difficult times come and go, those difficult circumstances will not break you if you have developed that attitude. You see, when the difficult time comes, happy and thankful people do not play victim. Instead, they take responsibility for how they got themselves into a mess and focus on getting themselves out of it as soon as possible. On the other hand, unhappy people see themselves as victims of life and they stay stuck in there. Have you known some of them before? I have known some of these people. Can you imagine being around those people all the time? <laughs> You don't want to be around those people because they somehow they seem to create the stale air and, and there's something um, not positive about them. And unhappy, unhappy people see themselves as victims of life and they seem to stay there forever. Unhappy people like to live in the past also. What's happened to them? And life's hardships are their conversation of choice. And when they run out of the things to say, they will turn to other people's lives and they gossip. And we should never gossip, right? The Christians should never gossip. Happy people live in the now and they dream about the future. We have wonderful prospect in the future. God has given us a wonderful promise, and we are, we, we are looking forward to the time when we can be together with Jesus in heaven. And here's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Paul says, 
We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far, that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. That speaks well about our future. And I'll tell you a little story about a little test testimony of a young man by the name of Dwayne. In fact, let me just read uh, his writing here. In his little letter, he said, I dread to think where I would be today if God had not saved me. My drug and alcohol abuse started when I was 14. First, I was experimenting with tobacco and marijuana and quickly began using harder drugs. It wasn't long before Satan was in full control and I was heavily involved in and taking and making drugs. This led to extreme violence and robbery. I had been in and out of jail since I was 18. I cannot help but weep. When I think of all the men and women's lives, I led to destruction. Everything we do in life, good or bad, right or wrong, affects everyone around us. And he continues in this letter here. Then, while I was sitting in a prison cell, lost, hopeless, and without direction, at the age of 34, God began to work on me. Upon my release, His divine direction led me to my hometown, a little church in my hometown, who invited me to one of their services. There, I met my Redeemer. I was soon baptized in Jesus' name. I carried a lot of baggage to the altar that day, but after laying it all down and giving it all over to him, who is altogether lovely, he made my burdens roll away. I cannot begin to express the love and peace I felt that day. And I still do today. Now I am 40. And I thank God every day for his blood, his mercy, his loving kindness, and this church. Look to the Lord and remember what he has done and praise him. End of the letter. See what God can do for you. See what God can do for your children. And our, to our loved ones. And I came across a relics um, from a song. Good to be alive. And it goes like this. Well, I wonder what today we'll see. Will I find my dreams or stare in the face of tragedy? Whatever may come, whatever may be, of this I am sure. I am forgiven and free and I will live like I believe. It's good to be alive. It's good to be alive to feel the wind in my face. See the blue in the sky. It's days like this, I realize what a gift it is. It's good to be alive. We all have difficult times in life. Maybe at times we have despaired, even of life itself. Maybe there were moments in life that we were feeling like quitting altogether. But if we really look at all the benefits of life that God offers you, 
I think we will find that it's good to be alive, no matter what circumstance you are under this morning. To feel the wind in our face, to see the blue skies, to, this, to see the sunshine, and to fall in love with our loved ones, with our Savior. And see the sunrise and see the beautiful sunset. I believe this life is good. This life is good. And we haven't seen anything yet, folks. What God has prepared for you and I that's beyond our imagination, the Bible says. Beyond our imagination. So I have a message for you this morning. God loves you. Enjoy His love. And express your gratitude to Him anytime. Isaiah 49, 16, in closing, the Bible says, See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. That's a personal love letter to each one of you. God has inscribed your name on the palms of his hand. And he will always remember you. Heaven will not be same if you are absent on that day. As far as God himself is concerned, heaven will not be the same without your presence there. God loves you, and so do I. May the Lord bless us this day. Amen.